You hitting that? You know what I'm talking about. You hitting that? I hit that. But are you hitting that? I'm talking about the sub button. Go down right now. Hit that big red button. We are 30 subs away from 9,000. It's been a long time to get here. I want to get to 9,000 subs on this video. Help me out. Free Giants videos every single day. Live shows on Wednesday. Just join the squad. Help us get to 9,000 subscribers. Go down right now and hit that big red button. What up, Giants fans? I'm your host, Marshall Green, and you're watching New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. In today's show, we're going to break down a trade rumor involving a Giants wide receiver and a Ravens defensive back. And then at the tail end of the show, there's some veterans. Aziz Ojolari, who's not, I guess not really a veteran, but a second year in the NFL, and Leonard Williams. They're already noticing a lot about Kayvon Thibodeau, and they're singing the praise of him, what he's shown through the first week of Giants OTAs. But first, let's start with Chuck Clark, a player that's been mentioned in trade rumors throughout the 2022 NFL offseason. The Ravens, they were shopping Clark during the NFL draft. The Ravens and the Eagles were in talks. And look, this is someone that's still 27 years old, has a $4.6 million cap hit, cap hit for 2022, but he also has a potential out after this season. And if that out doesn't happen, he would have a $5.1 million cap hit for 2023. Look, this makes a lot of sense. The Giants, they need to add to that safety depth chart, that safety room. They're very thin right now. Look, they're, they've switched Jaron, Jaron Reed from corner to safety. They don't have a lot of bodies in that safety department. And look, the Ravens, they don't have much playing time for Chuck Clark on the roster anymore. He's been mentioned in trade talks. After you draft Kyle Hamilton in the first round and you cash out Marcus Williams on like the first day of NFL free agency, that gives me the vibe and everyone in the NFL that you're trying to move on from Chuck Clark. And Adam Kaplan broke down the Chuck Clark trade rumors. He had this to say about those. He said the Ravens were trying to trade Chuck Clark during the draft, and they talked to the Eagles. Our understanding, it is still that they were not interested in Chuck Clark at that point. Now you say, how can that be? The guy's a starting safety. He's losing his starting job. And that's true. With Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams coming to Baltimore, Chuck Clark is on the outside looking in when it comes to playing time. And it's, it's unfortunate because Chuck Clark is a very good football player. He's played in every single game of his career. He's 27 years old, never missed a game. And last year, he was very productive for the Ravens. 80 tackles, three tackles for loss, 12 pass breakups, two interceptions. He's your prototypical strong safety. Can play a little bit of single high, can come in the slot, guard some tight ends, man on man and some running backs out of the flat, but he is a hard hitter. He likes to wrap up and finish. He's not afraid to lower his head and deliver a blow. I like what Chuck Clark brings, and the fact that him and Wink Martindale have worked together, I mean, his defensive coordinator pretty much throughout his whole career has been Martindale, so there's familiarity there, and they have ties. And when you look at this safety depth chart, after Xavier McKinney, there's a lot of unproven names. I like Julian Love, but I like him more as a slot corner. I don't know if he's ready to be a full-time starting strong safety. Then you drafted Dane Belton in the fourth round of the 2022 NFL draft out of Iowa. Who knows if he's going to be ready? I think he has a high ceiling. I like what he offers to the game. He can play that big slot nickel corner. He can come down and be in uh, safety in the box and defend the run. But there's only four guys on this roster that are on the depth chart. I know Yusuf Corker, the undrafted free agent, could sneak into this depth chart. But he's got an uphill battle as a UDFA to make this roster. We're going to continue to break down the trade rumors. But first, I want all Giants fans to treat the comment section as your way to be a part of today's show. Get down there. Be active. One thing I love about Giants fans is we're loud and we're proud and we like our opinions to be heard. So do that in the comment section right now. Should the Giants trade for Chuck Clark? Type T for trade, or you can go down and type P for pass. When you think about and look from the outside in of what a Chuck Clark trade could look like, what about trading Darius Slayton? Right now, the fourth or fifth wide receiver on the depth chart. If you want to put Wandale Robinson ahead of him, I'm cool with that. Look, Darius Slayton is on the outside looking in. There are rumors that the Giants have been shopping him, and if they can't trade him, they're just going to cut him. Zach Rosenblatt, one of the best Giants beat reporters, put out this article last week about Slayton. And he said, it feels like a foregone conclusion that the Giants cut or trade Slayton at some point before the start of the season. Doing so would save $2.5 million, and Slayton is making too much money to be a fifth wide receiver. And I agree. 
for the way the Giants' salary cap situation is sitting right now, Slayton, as a fifth wide receiver, to be making $2.5 million doesn't make all that much sense. I love what Darius Slayton did in his rookie season as a fifth-round pick coming into the NFL. Not a lot of expectations <clears throat> were on his plate, but he stepped into a starting role due to injuries. Had eight receiving touchdowns his rookie year. Then his second year, he played really well. He started off the season very well. Two touchdowns against the Pittsburgh Steelers, but since that game, the drops have been a problem, and his production has somewhat fallen off. This past year, in 13 games, he just had 26 receptions for 340 yards and two touchdowns. Is that because he didn't fit in the Jason Garrett system? I can believe in that. But at the end of the day, the NFL stands for not for long. And if you have more than one per season where you don't produce, it looks like you're probably going to be on your way out, at least out of East Rutherford for the New York Giants. How would Darius Slayton fit with the Baltimore Ravens and their wide receiver room? He could be their wide receiver three. This wide receiver room, after they traded Marquise Hollywood Brown, they're desperate for a playmaker on the outside. They need someone like Slayton that can stretch the field because the Ravens want to pound the rock. They're someone that wants to be a ground-dominant team. And when you have Slayton on the outside, as a safety, you at least have to respect his speed. You got to take your first step back after the snap has to be back. It can't be forward. I like Rashad Bateman. I like Tylen Wallace. I like Devin Duvernay. But are either of those guys really great football players? They can be. They haven't proven it yet. Darius Slayton, I think, would be a good pickup for the Baltimore Ravens. So what about this trade? Chuck Clark for Darius Slayton and a seventh-round pick. The Giants, they get a player that could start as their strong safety or be that third safety when they go three safeties on the field. And the Ravens, they get a player that's going to immediately help that offense, a deep threat that's going to make life for Lamar Jackson a little bit easier after they lost out on Hollywood Brown. The Giants, they give that 2023 seventh round pick to the Ravens to sweeten the deal up a little bit. Look, Darius Slayton, he has a cap hit of $2.5 million. Chuck Clark has a cap hit this year of $4.6 million. So you're only really having to pay $2.1 million in more money. So you have that type of money if you're the New York Giants. But if you were Joe Shane and the Ravens called and said, hey, would you guys trade Darius Slayton in a seventh for Chuck Clark? What would you do? Who wins this trade? Type NYG for the New York Giants or B-A-L for the Baltimore Ravens? I want to see all your answers in the comments section, Giants fans. And one thing I want to tell you guys that YouTube has now put on Giants Now by Chat Sports, it's a feature called Super Thanks. If you've joined our live show, <clears throat> you can super chat in live shows. This is pretty much a donation that we guarantee to get your comments, your picture, your username up on screen. But I understand people are busy. Not everyone can make the live shows. And a lot of people have asked me, yo, Marsh, how can I support the show? Super thinking is a way you can do that. Just click the icon right underneath me. It's the heart-shaped icon with the money sign in the middle. You can send a donation. You can also ask a question. And every super thanks we get from now going forward, I will put it on the very next show and feature your comments. So you'll get a shout out and I'll show you some love on the show. And if you don't feel like you want a super thanks, that's fine. Another easy way to support, like, comment, and subscribe, and tell a friend to tell a friend. And I also want to congratulate, congratulate, wow, that sounded terrible. Congratu congratulate, wow, I can't even speak anymore. Luis Ortiz, because he is the ultra game winner. We were giving away a hoodie like this, not the one I was wearing, a brand spanking new one outside of the package. Luis Ortiz, he was the winner of this. We've already talked to him. We've gotten in contact with him. So Luis, shout out to you. Shout out to Ultra Game for being a sponsor of New York Giants now. And stay tuned because we'll continue to do more giveaways like this on the channel. But Luis, salute. I hope you rock your, uh, your sweatshirt hoodie because there's not really a hoodie on this. So is it a hoodie? I don't know. It's a debate in the office. But send me some pictures on Twitter of you in the gear at Marshall Green underscore. I'll put you on the show and I'll give you a retweet. Next story on today's show, some veterans and players that have played for the Giants for a couple of years now, Leonard Williams and Aziz Ojolari have been very impressed by Kayvon Thibodeau through the first week of Giants OTAs. This is what Leonard Williams had to say when he was asked about Kayvon Thibodeau. He said this, not so much advice yet. I've been kind of more like paying attention to him, seeing what type of guy he is. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. It's like small things where we have a few guys on defense giving the ones a show look. And if they need like an offensive lineman or something like that, he's one of the first ones to run in there and give a look. I appreciate things like that 
from top picks because he knows that there's still more that he has to give to the team. Just because he got drafted high doesn't mean that he can't help out. Kayvon Thibodeau is doing everything he can to make the Giants better in every facet of the game. Then Aziz Ojolari was asked about Kayvon Thibodeau, and this is what he had to say about him being a New York football giant. I was excited. I was like, man, bring him on. Let's work because I know how elite he is and how good of a player he is, so why not just ready to go? And when you look now at the Giants' front four, the defensive line cornerstones, the pillars in this franchise, <clears throat> this is going to be one of the best defensive lines in the NFL this year, in my opinion. Leonard Williams, we know the type of player he is, only 27 years old. Aziz Ojolari, as a rookie, had eight sacks. Kayvon Thibodeau was just the fifth pick in the draft and arguably the best edge rusher in the draft. Dexter Lawrence, he's a great interior defense lineman. He's 24. You've got a group of four guys that aren't even in their prime yet. They're continuing to get better, and they're all damn good football players. I love what the Giants are doing on the interior defense line and on the edge rusher perspective. But what about this question, Giants fans? <clears throat> Who is going to have the most sacks for the Giants this year between Leonard Williams, Aziz Ojolari, and Kayvon Thibodeau. If I had to say today, I think Kayvon Thibodeau is the guy. I think Thibodeau is going to go for 10 sacks his rookie year. Aziz went for eight last year. But let me know where you stand, G-Men fans. Type 99 for Leonard Williams, 51 for Aziz Ojolari, or 5 Cinco for King K, Kayvon Thibodeau. I also want to say thank you to every person that has clicked on today's video and made New York Giants now a part of your day. That's awesome. If you haven't yet, go and hit that big red button. We're trying to get to 9,000 subscribers on the channel. I appreciate all the real ones that finished today's video. If you made it this far, you're part of the squad. Hit me up on Twitter, at MarshallGreen underscore, and I'll give you a follow back.